a lot of people out there. <laughs> um, my name is Gary Prezel, as Dave said, and, and I've gone to Lakeside here for about 15 years, and, and uh, it's always a, a, a privilege to get up and talk about the gospel and the gospel that saved, saved me from my sins. And um, just want to thank the Teen Challenge guys. It's not Teen Challenge anymore, it's Sheepgate, so I got to get used to saying that. But um, a, little, a little over 15 years ago, I surrendered my life to Jesus Christ. And after God redeemed me, I, I wanted to get involved where God was working. Um, my good friend, who was my boss um, on my first real job out of college, um, came to the bank where I worked, and he said he was involved as a board member at the Adult and Teen Challenge, uh, what it was before. Uh, he said Teen Challenge was looking for a, a new sponsor for their annual golf fundraiser. Um, I asked the bank president to consider this, and we made a trip to Colfax and uh, met with Mike Hunsberger. Um, he told, Mike told us the story of Teen Challenge and how it began, and he spoke, um, he told us the program was for the people with, the, with addictions, that it was faith-based, and how the program was changing lives through a relationship with Jesus Christ, and how it then, them changing would change their families. Um, I, was I was captivated by that. Um, my boss and I agreed that this was what we needed to get behind and support. A few, late, a few years later, I was asked to be one of the board directors where I am now. I, total, I totally believe in this program. I'm very passionate about it, and I love it. I, it, just, it just changes guys' lives and, and uh, puts them on a path to heaven. Um, I give my shortened testimony uh, fairly often and usually on gospel calls with uh, Pastor Dave or Joel, and there's a lot more details to my story. So when Pastor asked me to share my story tonight, I pulled out my testimony so that I didn't leave out some of the details. <clears throat> As a young kid, my parents... Uh, made sure I went to Sunday school, and then as I got older, to youth group and to church. I'm very grateful and thankful for the great parents that I had, and they got me in the church so that I could learn about God, so then I could decide on my own what I wanted to do and if I wanted to pursue God. After I graduated from high school, I went to college and uh, started my first job, and church at that point wasn't really a priority. And I never, never went back to church until I got married and started having kids. I wanted my kids to learn about God and provide them the same chance to learn about God that I, that I had and let them decide. Church really wasn't a, wasn't a want to um, at that point in my life. I felt good when I went, um, but um, I didn't really understand why I was there and the purpose, and I really didn't get anything out of it. About a year or so before I surrendered my life to Christ, I just, I felt an emptiness that I couldn't fill or describe. Nothing seemed to fill the emptiness. Um, the excessive drinking, working, um, I felt also a lack of purpose. At about the same time, I started having a lot of anxiety, and then that turned into panic attacks. I made numerous trips to urgent care thinking that I was dying. Uh, made trips to the doctor to find out what was going on. Each time they found nothing was wrong with me physically. I felt like I was spiraling out of control. I was successful in my job, and I looked like I had it all together on the outside, but on the inside I was a mess. I started really thinking about dying and what would happen to me if I did. And then I debated if I was, if when I did die, would I go to heaven or hell? I was truly afraid to die. Revelation 3.20 says, Jesus stands at the door and knocks. He knocks at our heart, and he wants in to have a relationship with us. He wanted a relationship with me. In all I was going through, Jesus was definitely knocking and trying to get my attention. I ran across a friend of mine that I knew it was very spiritual. Um, I would have called him a Jesus freak back then. <laughs> and that's kind of what I am now. It's kind of funny. I shared with him the health issues I was having, but the bigger issue I had was that I told him uh, the lack of purpose that I felt 
in the emptiness. I told him I was afraid to die and that I didn't know where I was going. We set a time to meet, and when we got together, one of the first things he said to me, if you, Gary, if you died today and you stood before God and he asked you why you should let you into heaven, what would you say? And through gospel calls, um, this was very common, and I said the common answer, I, I mean, I, I think I've done enough to get into heaven. Um, at that time, I was a pretty good parent, I thought, and a pretty good... Um, spouse, but of course, I, I wasn't really sure what the answer was. And my friend said, if that was the wrong answer, would you like to know? And of course, I told him yes. He shared with me that my sins had separate, separated me from a holy God, and that because of being a sinner, it keeps me from heaven, where sin can't be. I said, well, then, you know, if we're all sinners, how can anybody get to heaven? He said that that emptiness that I had um, can't, can't be filled with anything other than, than Christ. The only way to heaven, he said, is trusting in what Jesus did for me, living a perfect, sinless life, and he died in my place. I knew about Jesus. I grew up knowing about Jesus, but I didn't really know Jesus personally. He gave me a book to read by Rick Warren called The Purpose Driven Life. I didn't get very far into that book, and it became very clear what my purpose in this life was, is to love, live, and serve the living God, that Jesus wanted a personal relationship with me. God's word is clear that you can't earn heaven and that you can't work your way there. The only way to heaven is fully trusting in that Jesus lived a perfect life that I couldn't, and he died in my place, took my sin upon himself, and he gave me his righteousness so that I could enter him into heaven when I died. So on February 27, 2007, it was early in the morning at my dining room table. I was debating. I knew what I needed to do. I needed to surrender to Christ and give him my life. But I'm thinking, man, I'm just not going to have any more fun. I mean, I, I probably can't sin anymore, um, which we all enjoy, right? <laughs> um, but I debated what, what was going to, uh, I just debated, and Satan was working, working me over, and, and I finally said, God, I, I knelt down, and I said, God, I'm a sinner. I asked Jesus to forgive me of my sins and to save me and be my Lord and Savior. I felt a lightness in the weight of my sin I was carrying for years leave me. I felt a peace come over me that I can't, I just can't uh, explain. I finally had peace with God. Over the days after being saved from my sins, uh, my anxiety lessened as I felt God's peace take over. God has, had given me purpose and a reason to live for him and serve him and, give my life a, uh, and live my life as a thank you back to him for what he's done for me. Since surrendering my life to Christ, I just tried to be a faithful servant to him. I committed my life to tell people how they can be made right with God and how to get to heaven, to tell people that their greatest need in this lifetime is to have their sins forgiven. I see life and people differently now, and I try to see it through God's eyes. Based on what Jesus has done for me in trusting his finished work on the cross, I know I'm headed to heaven, and I want to take as many people with me as I can. Thanks.